Hi, we're Art and Bree. Four years ago, we left the city to buy a 100-year-old farm to turn it into our own productive homestead where we can grow our own food, build a healthy life, and raise our kids just how we like. If you want to join us in our homesteading adventure on our small farm, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm sitting here editing a YouTube video, the one that you're watching, and trying to figure out, should I make this into a whole vlog? Should I add more footage from the next day and make it longer? Anyway, I'm gonna leave it like it is. I'm gonna tell you the story of what happened. The other day, I made a mistake. I put the cows on the back pasture when I really needed them on level ground. Okay, I'm gonna let the cow out and not let the bull out, so I want you two to get back to them. Go stand right down there by the fence. It was a mistake to put them on the back pasture because I didn't realize when our cow's heat cycle was coming. Basically, her last heat cycle, our bull, tried to breed her on a hill, knocked her down, could have killed her. She was down, and if we didn't intervene, she would have died. I will link that video up here, just as an explanation, so I don't have to tell the whole story. And just the other day, I put them on the back pasture, the steepest pasture, so now I've got to get them off of there. We've got to get the bull and the cow on level ground this morning because she's gonna go into heat probably tomorrow if she's not pregnant. But first I have to separate the cow and the bull. First I have to separate the cow and the bull so she can eat her daily food. I'm checking her udder and her udder is nearly empty. So I do think he's letting the calves nurse, which that's a really great thing. I haven't seen them nurse, but her udder, you know, it's been 12 hours, her udder would be just tight. The next thing I need to do is run a wire basically from here straight down to that barn there so that they can be on this low, fairly flat ground while she might be in heat instead of having access to this hill up here or access to these hills in this back pasture, which are even steeper. Look at him go, falling in the wire, of course. Yeah. Now I'm gonna fence off a section around this creek so they can have access to the creek for a few days and not have access to the high hills. Next I'm just going to dig out a little spot in the creek where they can get a perfect drink of water. This water comes down from our spring. It's basically the same water we, that we drink. It's just run on the surface for about 150 to 200 yards. Last, I'm gonna throw out some hay. This pasture was eaten down and then we had it mowed. I'll only have the cows on here a few days through the cow's uh, heat cycle. Are you ready? What are we gonna do? The next thing that we needed to do was work on gentling our calf. Now, I have this huge renovation project on our house that I have to complete, but this week was messy. My wife, Bree, was sick for days on end. So some of these days, I was just barely keeping up. 
On this day, I took the kids outside to do some jobs that I know that they could safely do with me. And we decided that we were gonna work with our calf to gentle her. So we decided to catch her on a halter. It kind of got messy. It did not turn out the way I wanted. But in the end, we got to get our hands on the calf, get up close to her, pet her, get the halter on her, keep her on the halter for a few minutes. And that's actually a really important part of raising calves is getting them used to you, getting them to be submissive to you, and also taming them so that they can be handled safely and conveniently in the future. Now, we won't even keep her in the future, but we're always thinking of the calf that we want to pass on to someone else, and we want to hand, hand a very gentle calf on to the future owners. We actually care a lot about this because someone most likely is going to get her and our desire would be that someone gets her for a family milk cow so we can keep spreading really high quality, just wonderful family milk cows. So here's the footage of when we did that. Catch the calf? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, you can stand right here when the cows come in so you feel safe. Jump in there and you can look out through the crack. You just sit tight right there. I'm just trying to get the cow to come down here because that's the only way to get the calves in the barn without, um... The goats are going to foul this whole thing up if we don't... Alright, I put the goats in there. Hey cow, come on! I gotta get the bowl in that. Am I going to get the bowl? No, I'm going to try to keep the bowl outside. But that's why you're in here. Right out there, bud. The calves aren't coming down, dude. I'm gonna let the bowl in. So you close that door there, okay? Door for me. All right, I'm coming in. Okay. All righty. Come on, come in here. I'm gonna give him a little butt. Come on, get in there. Get in there, buddy. There we go. All right. That wasn't too hard. He's not a dude. What is he? He's a bull. He's a bull. He is giant. He is giant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's giant to you, isn't he? Do you want to look over and see him? Mm -hmm. Whoa. See? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Look, there he is. I do not. Okay. You, you don't want to get down? Okay. I don't want to get down. Okay, no problem. If you've never worked with a two-year-old as your work partner, you're really missing out. One of my favorite parts of life in general is watching the kids react to things and doing things with them and seeing their very different and often magical perspective on things that are happening. And it's very refreshing to me, especially to work with my two-year-old because he always has something creative to say. He always sees things in a little bit different way than I probably even am capable at this point in life. And it gives me just a little look back to that time that's just so overblown with imagination and fun. And I love it. I love every second of it. What did you say? That's our farm. That's our farm? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? You want to ride on a cow? You want to sit on her? Yeah. All right, you're riding on a cow. <laughs> I was sitting on a dog. She didn't like it very much. <laughs> I was riding on a dog. All right, stand right over here. Turkey in the straw. Turkey in the straw. Turkey in the straw? Yeah. You're so good at singing. <laughs> All right, we, fi we finally got the calf in. We were trying to, we're going to work with her on uh, gentling her some. Everything up until this point was actually going pretty well. It was happening very slowly, and I had a hard time getting the calves into the barn, but what happened next was just was frustrating, but we dealt with it. We took it in stride, and we fixed the problem, but it took a few people and more than a few minutes to get that done. That spot blocked? Justice is covering this spot so she just, we can run her down in here if she doesn't run off that way. 
Just hold still, Jesus. Uh, Step in there. It really is helpful to have five kids when you have a calf out. It's also more likely you will have a calf out. <laughs> I'll come help you in a minute. All of this hoopla was just to get this calf on the, the halter on this calf. All of this cute. You'll get a chance to get them out. So come on, we're gonna go for a short walk. I got that all thrown all backwards. She's back. Let's see if she likes alfalfa. Do you like alfalfa? Yeah. It is yucky. I got it. Here, come on. Hey bud, you need to go nice and slow. Yeah, you can give that to her. I'll stop right there just to say this is why we want to handle this calf because calves are high energy, very strong, and can be very jumpy. Cows actually live in the moment. And the, um, the extent to which that one statement affects how you handle cows and how they interact with their environment can't be understated. Cows are in the moment and they have observation powers far beyond what we do in the moment. They're not dealing with a lot of memory. They're not dealing with a lot of foresight. So they experience everything right now on a very high level. So the kids were jumping the calf and I was trying to teach the, the calf I'm, to, um, you know, just get used to human interactions, but also trying to keep, teach the kids at the same time to be cautious and to also move very slowly. Make sure they don't surprise the calf. When you read anything by Temple Grandin, she talks about how animals, cattle especially, can react to the smallest thing that we would never even notice. In this example, it's obvious she was reacting to the child, my child approaching, but that's why we're working with her, basically to desensitize her slowly to us, our movements, and it's actually really fun um, but you just have to be careful and go slowly with it. And we've been successful so far when we've tried this. I'm gonna get one more hit of Miss Alice is just watching quietly. <laughs> Look, I wanted her to eat it. She just wasn't really interested in that feed. I had gone to a lot of trouble actually to get the calf into this little front room by herself behind this main gate here or the front door of the barn and then um either joy or wilder let her out and i wanted her in a room just where we could pet her because that's my favorite way to like start gentling is in an enclosed space where you, they know they can't get away and you can just pet them and rub them down and they really get to like it quickly but i just threw the halter out and i'm like i'm not having her get away again we're not doing that it's such a funny position to stand in on, on that mulch pile. Come on, let's let her, we're gonna let her go. Is that white chicken yours? It's a good looking chicken. Oh yeah, the other one got eight inch mine, but we should put a B on one bill. The rest of our afternoon actually went really well in our evening. We got the kids ready for bed. My sister Anna had come over to learn to edit and to sit down with Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, which we edit with and work on editing. She's about to edit a big video project. And so she came over and actually helped me out by editing part of my vlog and I gave her some instructions. It was a very helpful arrangement, I hope for both of us. Anna, my sister's in the barn editing my YouTube video for tomorrow. Hey. 
Thanks, Anna. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, who's tickling me? Is it the dog? No, oh, it's, it's a, a kid. kid. <laughs> I thought it was the dog and it didn't stop. Who is that? <laughs> Anna's Hi. learning how to edit because she's going to edit a lot of our like videos for our fermenting course. Who's <laughs> <laughs> tickling her? Well guys, thanks for joining us. This is a little bit different format from other vlogs we do. Um, we will see you in a video tomorrow and look forward to it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.